Okay, that was weird, but it seems to be fixed now. Uh, okay, so let's try that again. Uh, welcome back. This is the second part of my series where I teach you to play Crusader Kings 3. Um, I changed up the format a little bit this time. Uh, given that you spend a lot of time looking at the map doing absolutely nothing, I thought having my head bobbing around might be more entertaining to watch than nothing on the map. And uh, since I'm streaming this, if anyone asks a question in the chat and I answer it, you'll be able to see what they said in chat in the bottom left-hand corner. So I thought that might be useful. Okay, the stream appears to be holding steady, so I think we are alright. Okay. Um, oh yeah, and you might notice my voice is a lot better than it used to be. I changed up some software and retuned my mic and stuff, so hopefully I will be a lot more intelligible now. Um, I still left the subtitles off though because you see so much information on the screen, I didn't really want to add more over the top of it. Um, So, I apologize if you were watching me because I have subtitles, I have them on, like, every other stream, but not this one. Okay, so, I wanted to talk about a couple of things, but first things first, let me just, uh, quickly... So, I wanted to talk about what I did with my retinues last time, or my men at arms. If you hear me say, uh, retinues, that I mean men at arms, retinues is what I would call in Crusader Kings 2, and so I still kind of reflexively call them that. So, not yet, but soon we will be at the point where we want to start having some of these for conquering more of the world. So, ret men at arms are a bit interesting. The way they work is, as you can see, first of all, they are much, much better than levies. So, levies have 10 damage, 10 toughness, no pursuit, and no screen. Whereas, uh, like, light footmen, so these are the most basic kind of man-at-arms, have the same damage, but 60% more toughness. They have 10 pursuit and 16 screen, so that makes them good. If you see, uh, if, when you're playing this, this is important, when you see um, there's this blue text, you can mouse over that and it will give you pop-ups that you can follow if you need to try and figure out what something does, which is really good if you don't want to back out to the wiki. So, even these most basic footmen are tremendously better than our levies. If you look at Armored Footmen, for example, you know, they have, uh, how much is that? 100, 200, a lot more damage and a lot more toughness, no pursuit, no screen. So think of these as like a direct upgrade to levies. They have no terrain effects that, and they counter spearmen. Now, this is the important part. Except for uh, siege engines, each type of man-at-arms counters and is countered by a different type. So armored footmen counter spearmen, right? So that's these guys, pikemen. And then pikemen counter light cavalry and heavy cavalry. So for example, if you were going to have like, you know, a million light cavalry, then you might want to bring um, some armored footmen as well, because then they can counter the pikemen, which counter your, um, which counter your cavalry. Now, uh, a I've fished around on Reddit for some answers for this because I thought, surely, like, it, it's not like the way that I do it is going to be the absolute best way to do everything right. Like, it would be... Oh, hold on, sorry. It would be weird for me to, you know, just randomly hit on the absolute best way to do things. So, the way I've seen people have talked about it is basically like this. Either... They go all in on one kind of retinue, and then they buy all the buildings that upgrade that kind of retinue for the person who holds them. So if I go over to my capital over here and look at my castle, and well, I can't build much yet, um, see stuff like this, the hunting grounds, whoever holds it, their light cavalry get an extra 2% damage and pursuit, right? But this stacks. So if you have, like, so at the moment we have three counties that we directly hold, so we have 
Thorland and a Sanosary. So if we were to build the hunting grounds in each of these, then our light cavalry would have plus six percent, right? So some people suggested that you just go for one type of retinue and you build all the buildings that make that retinue good. Others, I, one suggestion that I saw that I thought was pretty good, but I wouldn't do it here where there's a lot of hills and wetlands, was to make a lot of uh, light cavalry because as they put it, uh, let me, you know what, I'm going to give you a name, hold on. Because I actually just looked this up right now. Uh, this guy here, Nero Libeshiel, on Reddit, yeah, nice name. Uh, their suggestion is that uh, you should spam light cavalry since you shouldn't be fighting battles that you wouldn't, that you weren't going to win anyway. And they can turn, like, a win into you wiping their stack and just winning the rest of the war, basically. Uh, what I do is I usually build like a core retinue that I like. So for example, in this case it would be armored footmen because they're just really, really good. Like, uh, but also terrain doesn't matter to them. So they are really simple to use. And then the catch here is that they cast spearmen which aren't likely to come against you. And as heavy infantry, they are countered by light footmen. So what I would do is I want to, I can make five men at arms revenues, right? So what I want to do here is I want to have a thing of mangonels. Now mangonels are siege weapons. They're not very good in a war, actually. They're almost completely useless in an open battle. Um, I don't know if they do anything during an open battle, actually, but they're incredibly important for sieges. So I want one of these, which would be used for sieging, and then I'd probably go for, you know, I'd say two to three retinues of armoured footmen, and then fill out the rest with bowmen, because bowmen counter skirmishes, which counter heavy infantry. So that's my strategy, but uh, this is something that you... I think, realistically, the best strategy for men-at-arms will vary based on both how you like to play the game and where you're playing in the game world because for example so let's have a look at is, do I have like a terrain mode yeah sure so um island is like this right this whole area is wetlands and then over here we have plains and then there's like scattered hills and forests right but it's mostly plains and wetlands so the downside to that is that it means that if you look at other kinds of retinue, like, um, skirmishes are good in forests, but there's not that many of them in the Irish regions, whereas horsemen are really good on the plains, like, they get plus 15 damage on the plains, that's a lot, right, because, uh, they have 22.4 damage, yeah, uh, well, let's say 22, since the 0.4 is from the domain, with plus 15, that's more than armored footmen, but that only works when we're over in these bits that are plains, and it doesn't work, like, they take huge penalties in hills or in wetlands, right? So if we go back to look at them, so in hills or in wetlands, like in wetlands particularly, they are almost completely useless, whereas in hills they just have a small damage penalty. But this, all of this is wetlands, so I don't really want to invest in light horsemen. Conversely, uh, you know, bowmen aren't that great normally, but they're particularly good, you know, in hills or forests and armoured footmen are just good everywhere, so they're really simple to use, they're very effective. If you're just starting, I strongly recommend using them as your core men-at-arms, because you don't really need any particular strategy, just group up and hit, you know, hit the other army until it dies, basically. So once we've got money, that's what we're going to start doing. Now, the other things that I wanted to talk about were to do with, like, cleaning up the internal parts of the realm and so on. But let's leave that for a moment. For now, we've got some alarms going on. So these are the victories that we won last time, right? When we captured... Oh, sorry. So let's just dismiss those. Now, this is important. We lost a council, all right? I forget what happened to the last one, but I'm going to guess that he died in battle. So we need to appoint a new marshal. So we can sort these guys by their marshal stat. And as you can see, uh, none of them are particularly good. But... 
this guy has consumption, so he's going to die soon. Um, most likely. Uh, look at that. Look at this. This is what happens if you get consumption, right? Um, consumption is tuberculosis, by the way. Like, that kills people today. Um, you caught uh, tuberculosis in the Middle Ages. You weren't long for this sinful earth. So, this guy isn't spectacular, but, you know, 10 Marshall, he'll do, it's not an amazing amount. Um, what do I consider good? Yeah, around 10 is, okay, 9 to 10 is average, and then 8 and below is bad. So if you played Crusader Kings 2, that's about what you'd expect. So for now, we'll just make him the Marshal. Uh, we did use up a bunch of bad levies, so for now I'm just going to leave him, actually, this is a good time to talk about it. Okay, so... If you check out here, see this thing? Control. Uh, this is like autonomy in EU, but backwards. The higher this is, the better. Uh, it basically represents how much, um, well, I guess control you as the ruler have over the county as a whole, right? So uh, at 100, you're getting 100% of the taxes and levies, but as it goes below, like if it was at 90, you'd only be getting 90% of the t levies and taxes and so on. So, for example, Ossery... Oh, it's actually doing really well. Okay, never mind. Where are you wanting us to... Ah, that's why. Okay, so... I thought that we were going to talk about this, but actually, uh, one of the things that you can do with your marshal is you can tell them to increase control in county. So that will slowly raise the control value up to 100, and they'll be like, okay, we're done. But what it can also do is remove... Um, county corruption modifiers like this one, the smuggling ring, and that's until 1076, honestly, at a 2% chance per month of removing the corruption, it's better to not even worry about that. So what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to leave him on organized levies, because that makes them reinforce 15% faster, and we're only at about half capacity right now, because we just had that big war with Ossery. So... That's sort of. Let's see what this other alert is. I don't have enough spouses. Right. Forgot about that. So in uh, insular Christianity, no, we're not Catholic. We're insular, um, which is pretty much exclusive to Ireland, and I think all of Ireland is insular, isn't it? Yeah, except for these two, which are Catholic. Um, so, Insular Christianity has, as we can see here, marriage type polygamous. So we actually need more spouses or we start taking a penalty, right? See, two few spouses minus half pay per month. So we should try and fix that. And... It's possible at this point, so for example, we can say sort by alliance power. But most of these aren't spectacular. Where is Brave? Hmm. Alright, so none of those are really good. How about pro prestige gain? Yeah. Getting secondary spouses is in a way that easy, so what I'm actually going to do instead is we're going to check the filter. I'm going to go down to Traits Inheritable. And, let's see. Oh, you're actually a house member of someone. That's cool. Okay. Um, wow, her stats are not bad either. Who are you? Okay. So, this not only gives us more chances of having kids, but uh, there's a chance that our kids will inherit her quick trait, which is really good. So, we'll do that. And since she's in our court and unlanded, that's just free. And as you can see, since we now have two spouses, we are now getting uh, no piety penalty. Do we get a prestige bump yet? Not yet, okay. I need to check and see if you get that for having mobile spouses, but at the moment, um, why not? I'll take her as well. It doesn't cost me anything, and if I remember correctly, I think in this game you still get the prestige bump. Okay, but for now we're just going to unpause and we're going to wait for a little bit.
Okay, maybe not. Uh, in Crusader Kings 2, you would get, like, bonus uh, piety and such. Alright, so let's uh, just pause again quickly. Okay, at the moment I have these two vassals, right? Desmond, there is one county here, yep, and Ormond. So, while I'm waiting for this to build up again, what I can try and do is uh, try and clean up my uh, internal borders. So, if, like, by preference, I would control all of this, right? Now, Buddy here happens to be my primary heir. Yeah, heir. Um, how do I? No, okay. Now, as it happens, due to uh, some unfortunate deaths, <laughs> he's in trouble. And he, we are his primary heir, right? So if he dies, we inherit his title. And we're not at our domain limit yet, that's this up here. You basically want to be at your domain limit as much as physically possible. The more land you directly hold, the better. Uh, that diddly ding was probably uh, Streamlabs emailing me saying, here's your stats for your, light for your latest stream, the one that I cancelled immediately before this because Twitch threw his fit. So we are going to right click him and we're going to go down to hostile and click murder. No. Not really in a good position to get things done at the moment, but there are things that we can do about this, right? So, first things first, we go over to our council and we go to our spy master and we tell him to support our schemes. Okay, now we let the game run for one tick so that it updates things and if we go back to the intrigue tab, we can see that the secrecy and success chance have both bumped up. Now, the success chance at best is 95%. The secrecy chance is basically how likely the person running the scheme is to get away with it and not, you know, get fingered for murdering someone. Um, now we can look here and say, okay, who do we want to invite? This is automatically sorted by success chance, so the more... Uh, they add to the plot, the higher up in the list they'll be, which is fine. So it can be convinced here, tells us, and, you know, he'll join, but only if we bribe him for 58 gold, or this one, how much does he want? 75, okay. So, let's start by bribing this one. Now, something uh, useful as well is while our Spy Master is on support schemes so here where it's possible side effects, he may discover a secret of someone relevant or to, especially to the hostile scheme. So if that happens, right, uh, what we do is we can then use that secret to try and get them involved in the plot. So for now, we're just going to unpause and wait for a little bit. Oh, that's useful. However, uh, there's not really much point in um, doing this because we're planning on inheriting it directly anyway. So I'll let it go and get a favor hook on him, which then might be relevant later. But it, as you can see here, right, if I were to change his taxes to high, so what I'm currently getting is, you know, 0.1 gold. If I did that, I would get, oh, 0.2 gold. So, you know, not really worth doing, whereas since I've got this hook on him, I can maybe do stuff to him. In uh, previous games, you could, you know, uh, imprison someone and throw them in the open yet, which, you know, their life expectancy would not be high down there. But you can't do that in this game to easily kill people, probably because it's much easier to imprison people now. So for now, we're just going to wait, and we're going to wait for, you know, to see if our spy master digs up anything that can be used to pull summoning, uh, to get money up so that we can bring people into the plot. Um, and we need, you know, we need more money for retinues and so on, and we just need to wait and see what happens, basically. Oh, do you not work? Uh, 
Oh, you know what? Globally, okay. I just changed, like, some software up, so I'm still getting hang of it. But hey, just think we're actually playing the game this time, and the stream's only been up for 20 minutes. Not like last time, where uh, we didn't start playing it until like an hour and 40 minutes in. Well, okay, that's a bit unfair. Technically everything that we did, like before that, we were still playing the game, it's just... Uh, you know, now, now we're actually, you know, things are moving, things are happening. <laughs> I mean, you say that, but remember that, you know, this is a Paradox game, and one of the ones that has a lot of playtime, so people who have, you know, a few hundred hours are still considered to be new to the game. At the moment, I'm letting this run on three just because I want, uh... Like, if something happens, I want to be able to respond to it immediately. Hmm, excuse me. Why am I even... Oh, because you're my bishop. Okay, that's why. Oh! Wow, okay. What were you doing in England? You fool. And why is Gwent independent? <laughs> what happened over here? Oh, we got a sun. Awesome. Okay. Uh, sure, why not? Okay. So this is really, really good. Um, because our religion, as you can see here, it's male-dominated, so our daughter could become a ruler if we didn't have any other heirs, but, you know, everyone would be kind of mad at her because, you know, implying women can rule, right? Um, so we are going to educate you personally, and what I'm actually, I'm going to, uh, let me see, because I also have a war in, yeah, okay. So I'm going to send him up with a martial education, just because that way he'll benefit from the fact that I have a martial education, and realistically he'll also be fighting wars. On top of that, um... Ah, that's why. Uh, on top of that, if the education of the child matches the education of the person who is um, tutoring them, then they may get better results from education. Sorry, let's just uh, check something out here really quickly. So, all oh, sword by prestige. Okay, so if you sort by prestige gain, this is kind of. A, actually. You can do this if you don't really care about alliances, or you can try Salt by Alliance Fire instead, right? But that may pick some weird things, like in this case, it's Duchy of Upper Lorraine. That's actually not too terrible to think about. But I don't really want to get drawn into the inevitable England War, especially because there's no longer a straight crossing here like there was in Crusader Kings 2. Yeah, I'm not seeing too much there, so let's go back to Prestige Gang and see who we can get. Oh, nice, the Carling. <laughs> so, in this case, as you can see, we'd get an enormous Prestige Bump because the Carlings are the House of Charlemagne, right? As in Charlemagne the Great, unifier of, well, what became 
France and Germany and the Holy Roman Empire and all of that. So in this case, rather than marrying him for an alliance, we've mostly married him for the benefits that it will bring to the dynasty as a whole. Uh, she's not spectacular, but the alliance isn't likely to cause any problems. And we've kind of snapped her up before she could get kidnapped by anyone else. Since we have polygamy, we can marry other people as secondary spouses for breeding in uh, good traits. So now that that's done, we are sitting in the wedding again. However, so since we have the money, we may as well invite our friend here. Ah, excellent. Okay, so as you can see, with two agents, suddenly our success chance is nearly 80%, and we are not too likely to be found out. It's also possible that our spy master will dig up a secret. Ah. That is pretty good. What is his resistance? Okay. He has a pretty good opinion of me, so let's try this. So this is saying, uh, you know, you can try this and you might get something useful or um, he might make it harder, right? But he's got a pretty good opinion of it, so I feel like pressing a luck. Alternatively, if you didn't want to do that, uh, you could take it for yourself, in which case you'd get the effects. So the negative cost off scan resistance, but an extra 20% prestige per month, which isn't a small modifier. And over 10 years, that's a lot of extra prestige, right? But at the moment, we're trying to kill this guy. So let's see if we get lucky. Ooh. Unlucky. Okay, he got extra vigilance, so... Uh... That hurt it a little bit, but it's okay. You see, as you can see here, uh, schemes now work kind of like um, archaeology in uh, Stellaris. You have a chance per month of it progressing and when it progresses to 10 then you get an opportunity to go ahead with it and it rolls based on the current success rate and secrecy and so on. So now we just wait. Like the obvious advantage to patrolling it myself right is so for example I'd get this castle, which gives 1.4 and a bit tax per month, and I'd get, you know, these buildings. And additionally, I would also get control over these temples and cities, which would give me even more tax. So that would come to me directly instead of being filtered through this vassal. The problem is that I can only hold five holdings myself, right? So if I click here, I can see in my domain these are my holdings, right? So I have these three castles. I'll have four castles after I have dormant, but for example, see how there's an empty slot here? Um, if I so wanted to, I could build... Wait, I can't... First of all, there needs to be a holding of each type. So for example, you need to have a castle and a temple and a city. But then you can build it in any order that you want it. So say I'd done that, or... Yeah, right. So say I'd done that, I would be able to for example, build another castle, right? And then I would have four holdings, not five. Oh, and the plot has been discovered. That's really frustrating, because as you can see, that completely tanks the uh, scheme. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna abandon that. And instead, remember how I have a hook on him? I am going to imprison him and use a hook. Now this is an act of tyranny, so all of my subjects will lose 5 opinion, but it's only 5 opinion, right? So it's not that much to worry about for now. Uh, at 90% he will almost certainly go along with this. Yeah. Okay, so he's now on house rest, right? So I could ransom him for 50 gold. I could execute him, but uh, as you're about to find out, so if we go into, see here, the court, 
say, prisoners, so I can, like, execute, but, you know, that's tyranny. Um, <laughs> and will cause all my subjects to lose five opinions, or what I can do is move him to the dungeon. Now, at the moment, he's in house arrest, right? So, you know, he's in, you know, bad diplomacy, his natural dread is going down, he's not able to get his lifestyle experience very well. If I move him to the dungeon, however, so he is now in the dungeon, his health takes a severe penalty. Now, the purpose of this, so as you can see here, health poor, ailing, blah, blah, blah. So now, what we do is we just sit and wait for him to die, and then I will inherit that county. Oops. <laughs> oh well. Uh, so that was due to a screw up. My bishop is like, I think you're screwing with me, but uh, he's endorsing me, so that's fine. Um, who do I want on my good side? Why don't we try and sway my life? Ah, and we get a new pet. Cool. Alright, so what do I have here? Okay. Normally, I would suggest going all the way down a tree, but in this case, I'm going to jump around a little bit, and the reason for that is because we are going to be declaring you know, wars a lot. So this, which just halves the cost of declaring war, is extremely good. So we're just going to grab that, and we'll probably go down the side of this first, because the uh, knight um, bonuses like this, plus 75% knight effectiveness, and remember, if we look at our knights, right? So this guy has 17 prowess, each point of prowess gives him 100 damage and 10 toughness, right? So he currently has 1700 damage and 10 toughness. Okay, he is actually worth 170 pendants on his own. Actually, wait, no, is it more than that? No, they're 10 each, so... Yeah. Um, so 1700 and then... <clears throat> Have I mentioned that I'm really bad at math? Because I'm really bad at math. Um, how do you multiply something by a percentage of itself? Uh, times... I don't know, 1.75? Yeah, so that's the effective... That's how much power he'll, like, power he'll have. Okay, nearly 3,000. He would literally be worth more than all of my levies put together at that point. Okay, so uh, that's really, really powerful, and I really hope that I did that math right. Now, our levies are back up, so what we're going to do is, first of all, can we... Right, we don't have a CB there, and we don't have a CB here. Now, double I'd like to get, but Athlon happens to be right there, so we're going to grab our priest, who isn't very good, but we are going to grab our priest, and we're going to tell him to go and get us a claim on Athlon. Which will take him 20 months, and most likely bad things will happen in the meantime because he, he's kind of crap. But there's no guarantee that we get someone better. So this is another, and now we wait bit. While they're waiting, we'll use this time to do things like, you know, clean up our internal borders, such as getting rid of the kid in charge of Ormond, um, beginning to build up retinues for when we really go to war in seriousness. Uh, so for example, I can actually start doing that now. So... We want one of these guys. So they will, they start at five, they'll build up to ten over time. So while they're reinforcing, they can actually be quite expensive, but when they're at full manpower and they're just uh, sitting there, they're generally not too expensive. One of the counselor things that you can set your marshal to do, uh, this one here, train commanders, also reduces men at arms maintenance. So it's quite good during these. In fact, I'm going to move him over to that now because we can potentially get new commanders or knights, or improve them, or we can get them killed, but that's okay. These things happen.
Why is my Discord buzzing? While we're doing this, let's see what's going on in the rest of the world. Okay, so over here looks pretty normal. The Holy Roman Empire is still huge. Brittany's still alive because it's only been about 10 years. Who is still... Wait. Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. Aren't you... Did you win? He won. Okay, so normally at the start of the 1066 start, right, England is in a three-way tussle between Harold Godwinson, who currently owns England, um, and then where the hell is Normandy? What happened to your... You lost, okay. So, and also, so we have William the Bastard, that's, as we know him today, William the Conqueror, who historically did, in fact, conquer England uh, by poisoning Harold Godwinson. It's so believed that a pair of riding gloves that uh, Godwinson used were covered in a contact poison, and he basically put them on and dropped dead. Um, so, at game start, normally he is in the middle of invading England, and also... Ah, uh, one of the dudes over here, um, who's at the top of Norway? Yeah, this guy, Harold Harbour, also has, is trying to get into England. Normally, uh, because William comes with, you know, 10 million event troops, uh, he will just smash England flat and win, but obviously that didn't happen while we were over here in Ireland doing tiny things. Uh, Harold Godwinson actually won the war against William the Conqueror and, and Harold Hardroller and kicked them both out. So, uh, that happened. Um, <laughs> okay, this is, this is why I love CK, uh, like Crusader Kings, you never know what's gonna happen. And sometimes it's just really dumb things like that. Okay, so uh, one of our councillors died, our chancellor, so let's... And this is the best replacement that we have, okay. But they are pretty alright. No, yeah, they're 11, it's average, it's not terrible. None of our councils are very good at the moment. Um, later on, we'll start to see. Uh... Oh, yeah. Oh, whoa. That is a good trait. Hold on. I want you. Really? Oh, she's currently married. Okay. <laughs> Wait, no, she's not. You aren't married. What the hell? Oh, and she's the wrong fate. Hold on. Uh, what if I were... Okay, I don't want her enough to pay 20 gold for her. Uh, not Viking England. That normally happens when... Actually, there is a bit of... Oh, no, that's only at the earliest start. Okay. Um... No, we do... Do we have a bit of Viking England? No. They've... This guy, uh... Is sort of a Viking in the sense that he's Germanic culture from Norwegian, but he's converted to Catholic as the Vikings often did when they settled down in other areas. As you can see over here, oh whoa, okay, Norway itself has gone Catholic. You will commonly get Viking England if you start in an earlier start date, especially with the Norse Lords pack enabled, which I don't, I have all of the uh, non-graphical like, DLC disabled, so the only DLC that I have turned on is, um...
I would love to show you, but I can't. The only DLC that I have on is the Fashion of the Absent Court DLC, which you probably won't even notice. Okay, let's see your lifestyle event. Uh... Maybe wounded, but it's worth a try. Ow. Okay, so we got wounded, but we have a reasonable position. Because she has 13 learning, which is good enough, and the physician trait. So, there was a pretty good chance that even if we got wounded, it would resolve itself instantly at no, but without any really big problems. Uh, -huh. <laughs> uh no. You're in the dungeon so that you die there. <laughs> if you think that's cruel, uh, get used to it. Killing kids is like the favourite pastime of Crusader Kings players. Because they tend to be much softer targets than when they're adults. Oh yeah, what happened in Spain? Uh, Spain's looking about the same as it usually does. So it doesn't look like anything insane happened. Ah, excellent, we now have a... Okay, so we'll go briefly into debt, but we'll get a claim. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until we get back out of debt. Because uh, being in debt, being in debt bad. Okay, so while we're in debt, you can mouse over this to see, but yeah. as you can see here, we have these issues, right? So we are just going to wait to come back up out of debt, and then we're going to go to war. Alright, so I should talk about fervor. So fervor is for the religion, not the faith. Remember that the religion is like the umbrella and then the faith is individual splinters. So Catholic and Inshallah are both faiths and they're both Christian faiths. So fervor basically means the higher it is, uh, the harder it is to convert and the more expensive it is to make heresies, the less likely heresies are to appear. And also you need high fervor to declare great holy wars, so crusades and so on. So occasionally you'll get events mostly based on, in my experience, they're mostly based on the traits of uh, realm priests. And uh, they can reduce your fervor or increase it, and particularly if priests have uh, what the faith considered sinful traits. So for us that's lust, gluttony, greed sadism or sadistic or vengeful um then you're more likely to get bad events where it's like you know your priests aren't practicing what they're preaching whereas meanwhile uh our guy had what do you have but right, he has temperate right so he shouldn't you know he shouldn't overindulge in anything that's one of our virtue traits so that's why we just got an event where he I uh, gave like a bonus to the fates further, further, further. Okay. Uh, bonus prowess or hmm. I was thinking of going to war soon. I might do that. That reminds me. Can you? Find... No, it's... Sorry, I'm muttering because I'm trying to around with some stuff. Like, as you can see, most of my knights kind of suck, except for my spy master, who's amazing. Holy crap. Alright, okay. So, something to take heed of is that rulers can't, um, like, player characters can't participate as knights. Okay? 
you can command, but you can't be a knight. So prowess is not useful to you, just a, not that useful just at the moment. So what I'm going to do is instead of getting respected expert, which gives bonus prowess, I'm going to do this one and get the 30% chance instead of the 70% chance and get wounded, but that's okay, these things happen. We still get some experience and because of the treatment we did wounded didn't stick, so it's fine. I'm going to wait until we have about 30 gold, and then I'm just going to fall on Athlon. I also want it to not be winter. Which I guess it's not at the moment. Okay, let's go and declare that war then. Okay, so here... So we have a claim, so we can say Brune, declare war. You know, we have these advantages, but I'm not going to call them in because that's expensive. So, if reinforced demands, then I get the Earl of Athlon, and they are way weaker than us, right? They do have uh, better retinues than us, since they have two, but we just outnumber them so massively that that's not going to matter. So, normally this would be... Uh, you know, twice as expensive, but because I picked up that perk, it's only 63 prestige to declare. So we declare, and I'm going to say raise all here, and I'm going to say to not split based on the supply limit, because we're pretty much going to overwhelm them. I am going to command them myself, because you get a bonus for that, and it frees up some of my other commanders to run the knights. So where is your castle? Just right there. So we're just going to walk straight in and take the place, basically. As you can see here, <laughs> they're actually in debt, we're better, we have more dudes. They have an advantage because they'll be defending in wetlands, but we outnumber them 3 to 1. It's going to be messy. Having daughters is pretty much whatever, but you can marry them off for alliances, so it's not that bad. Oh, I got his son. Ah, he's actually pretty good. I wonder if I can recruit you. I can. Nice. Yeah, so now we're in siege mode. But because of the, uh, so we actually just recruited that guy, so we're going to force those, because they're the best that I've got. So because of the siege weapons, we're getting 1.3 daily progress, so the siege will go fairly quickly. It also means that we can get breach events, which dramatically reduce the amount of time that it takes to siege things down. So here they come again, but... They pretty much have no chance. Here we're going to take Shivara of Dominance, and then we're going to take these two as we go on. I'll probably go down an entire tree just because we're already taking about half of it and it's pretty small. But you might not necessarily want to do that. Okay, also see here, you will win decisively, but they're obliged to keep trying because if I win this siege, then I win. You can actually see... Oh, never mind. Okay, normally... Uh, this would have a little green glow around it to say that, you know, they're acting at full potential because nothing is countering them. But, uh, they're so screwed that they're basically just present. Yeah, as you can see, we are kind of kicking the crap out of them. 
they, they came in with 225 guys and we killed 83 of them. That's a huge percentage. This is kind of whatever, but um, I'm mostly doing it for role-playing reasons, but also having uh, your life as a soulmate can potentially give you like huge stress reduction later on and all kinds of things. So we'll see what happens. So we just straight up took over. Okay, so at the moment we've got low county control in Athlon because, you know, we just took it over. So it's at 60, so we're only getting, you know, we're getting less of it than we should. Okay, it's not as bad as I thought. Uh, we're getting 80% of the levies and 60% of the taxes. I thought it was just like a flat percentage of how much you should be getting, so it's not... So we'll leave this guy here and he will slowly do things like, uh... Okay. Um, it will slowly do things like try and remove, uh, bad modifiers and, uh, raise the control in this until we are getting the maximum benefit from it. Why do you want to be converting? Oh, that's right. I forgot that that was Catholic, okay. You do want to try and have like religious unity in your lands because if people are being ruled by someone who is a different religion to them, they get pretty pissy about it. I, I mentioned this in the first part, that like, in this day and age, religion wasn't just something you did on Sunday, right? It was possibly the single largest identifier in your whole life, so. Oh no, I got a second son. Okay. <laughs> so, having two sons is not so great because uh, under partition, I mean, in this case, it doesn't matter too much because of tenistry, but. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't want to lose 150 prestige, sorry. So as, as you do schemes, you'll get various events like that, and it's up to you which way you want to take them. Oh, that's a shame. I wonder if I can organize an alliance with... Oh! Oh, I see. You guys split up. Oh, I wonder if I can negotiate an alliance with... No? Oh, his opinion of me is not so great. Okay. Maybe I can... Uh... Oh, wait, no. I can't have two personal schemes. Never mind. That being said, we've taken Athlon, so we now have six of the eight counties that we need to form the Kingdom of Lyon. And once we take Dublin and Leinster, we will have all of it, but I can't declare on you just yet. I need... okay, so I should... eh. At the moment, what's more important to me is um, getting these claims set up, so I will do that first and then I can worry about religious unity later, right? Because there's also like a flat chance that um, counties convert, and I think from memory it's based on your learning, so mine's terrible, but... Uh, keep getting this event. Hmm. 
So the reason why I'm doing this, I'm marrying the second son off to this guy, right? So now we have an alliance with Connacht. Connacht is the only other real power in Ireland at this point. Um, and so having them, having an alliance with them, we can basically split Ireland between us. They will also help act as a shield against anything that's going on up here. And later on, I, after I get Kingdom of Ireland, you know, they're pretty pleased with us, right? So they may, uh, just... Hold on, what is this? Oh, it says he's the house there, okay. Um, so later on, when I go, when I make Ireland, he may agree to become a vassal out of hand, and like, you know, he already owns this duchy, so like, there's not really any harm in being like, hey, be my vassal, and you know, reap the benefits of being part of the United Ireland. I mean, that's a pretty good reason for no contact, to be fair. Um, There's only so much that she can get out of having a weak hook on me, so I'm just going to do that one. Which makes this game work a little bit better. I'm going to need some more opportunities for that to really go ahead, but... We're back in the waiting game point again. Because, you know, I'm waiting for... Here we go, it's only a 60% chance, but... Oops. That was interesting. So much for uh, that, and now I can't do like any of these until uh, what is this? Until the sixteenth of July. Okay, but she's not too mad at me, so that's alright. How do you have both forgiving and wrathful? I can't get over the fact that Godwinson won this war. Like, that never happens. <laughs> William gets so many advantages that it just should not be possible for Godwinson to win this war. Like, someone else should win. <laughs> so that just goes to show, like, this went off the rails from the moment I unpaused the game. I just didn't really notice until now because we were busy over here. Yeah, it looks like Byzantium hasn't completely imploded yet, but there's a pretty non-trivial chance that uh, when I look over there next, it will be, um, you know, split in half because half of it is revolting. I have a fantastic picture somewhere. Hold on. Oh no, did I lose it? I think I lost it. Well, 
Okay, I used to have a really great screenshot from CK2 that I'd taken where Byzantium had basically split in half and like fully half of it was in an empire level revolt, but the revolution leader was the wife of the emperor of Byzantium. <laughs> okay, that shit is amazing. Oh, I'm a paragon, am I? I really need the money. Ah, uh, so we get some stress. So we want this to not reach 100, but for now it's pretty okay. Oh yeah, I showed it to Fan and she was like, holy shit, he's the ultimate cock. <laughs> okay, so now with this money, we start building more men and arms. So I'm gonna grab, hmm, what should I grab? I can actually buy bow threat and use a bowman pretty early. I might do that. No, I'll do the footman first. We only buy these one at a time, but they are very worthwhile. Also I noticed a huge chunk that that took out of our expenses, right? 1.3 gold. And right now we're only making, you know, 5.2 gold. So that's a significant amount. But it will really be very worth it. Because when we, at the moment we can't, um... We can't push multiple claims at once, right? Because you can't do that until High Medieval Era when you research this, right? Divine Right, and then you can press all of your claims at once. So we have to take things either by taking the highest level part, or piece by piece, is, is the case with Dublin. Now, how many dudes do you have? 183 dudes, some light footmen, and some light horsemen, okay. So they're weaker, but I definitely am going to want to bring bowmen, because otherwise uh, their light footmen will counter our heavy infantry. So we'll wait until we've built up our economy a bit more, and then we'll get to work. Where does Gallant end up? It's... yeah, okay. The bonus prestige and bonus marshal are both really good at the moment, so I am going to finish off this um, thing. And Peacemaker is really good as well, because you could force peace at 90% instead of 100% war score. So it saves a lot of time, and you can often get to 90% war score without having to siege down absolutely everything, or win like, enormous battles. <laughs> I think 876 Inquisitor, is it Inquisitor or Conquistadors? Oh no, not a third son. This is the downside to polygamy, but it's not a huge issue, and the reason for that is because sooner or later we will be able to invoke Tanistry, uh, which you can see. I think I gotta do it from here, right? Yeah, add laws. When we've got the 1500 prestige, I can do Tanistry elective and Unlike in real life, where this was a huge problem and dramatically weakened the, I the Irish clans, uh, in this game it's one of the best things that you can possibly do because it stops your realm from fragmenting. You know, the opposite of how it worked in real life. This is one of the reasons why Ireland is considered, like, it was called Tutorial Island in Crusader Kings 2, and that's part of why Merchad is like one of the recommended starts in CK3 is in part because Tanistry makes dealing with your succession so much easier. Okay, let's do that, because you need all of the learning that you can possibly get, my dude.
it, this in particular is really weird because I am almost, I, I, they went out of their way to fix a lot of things in CK3 that were inaccurate to real life, like grossly inaccurate. I am almost certain that the only reason this one was left alone is because uh, it's part of the reason why Ireland is considered easy and they wanted to keep it as like Tutorial Island in CK3 as well. So they probably kept it for that exact reason. Whoa, this dude's amazing, holy crap. Oh yeah, you are now forced to be a knight. Wow. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the reason why. At least you don't start with it in this game, you have to actually build up to it, so I need 1500 prestige. So later on I'll be looking for more opportunities to raise that, like, as the character gets older, because at the moment we're 32, right? We're doing okay. Um, in 30 years time that's not going to be the case, but by then I should have enough prestige that I can institute tenistry and not worry about everything going to crap. Oh, excellent. Okay, so you can do that. So we actually finished county control, so this is now back at 100, so we're now getting the full tax and everything from it. So very shortly we will be able to build our next metadons column. Oh, and we leveled up our fan, cool. So when... I oh, know, it's this one. So for being distinguished, uh, everyone who isn't a member of the clergy likes us more, and we get an extra knight. If we go here, you can see now we have seven knights, and uh, remember our knights have 175% effectiveness, okay? So they are plus 75%, which is insane, considering how big their numbers already are. So here's our second Armoured Footman retinue, uh, retinue. I'll probably do two Bowmen as well, just for the, mostly just for the fun of it, because if you look at how Bowmen are, uh, Bowmen, Bowmen. Uh, but again, maybe not, they don't really give much free Pursuit and Screen, so Pursuit is basically how much, how, how many casualties you can cause when the enemy army is in retreat. And then screen is the reverse, it helps you not take casualties when you're the ones retreating. Oi. Can, I, can I please get a better steward? No! No I cannot. I can however get a better marshal. So as you can see, because uh, he's so much better, there are no longer any negative side effects here. It's all positive. Anytime one of those things come up, either one of my guys who is a reasonable commander will get a commander trait, or one of my knights will improve. Like, no question about it. Oh, I have Typhus. Brilliant. So Typhus is camp fever, and uh, it will kill you. So in this case, it's, uh, we're gonna go all in on the risky outcome, right? Because if we don't get rid of Typhus, we're just dead. So, you know, we could be like, okay, we'll take a minor, uh, we'll, we'll do something not very drastic and we'll have minor results. No, okay, this is Typhus, we are dead if we don't fix this. See up here? <laughs> you are on death's doorstep. So, too late for caution. Okay. Uh, greatly reduced disease symptoms for one year. Uh, yeah, because she uh, somehow decided to rub a severed hand on my chest. And it worked. I mean, in this day and age, medicine was like as much magic as it was science. Um, who was it? 
wasn't in this age, it was before that, but one of the great Greek philosophers was like, uh, no physician who doesn't have a working knowledge of astrology should be allowed to call themselves a physician. <laughs> okay, Dynasty Renown. So when you reach a breakpoint of Renown, you can buy a uh, bonus, right? So these are, we have these seven trees, and then if you're Norse and you have Norse Lords enabled, then you get some more up here. These are benefits for everyone in our dynasty. So, House of Warriors is kind of an obvious choice. Everyone gets plus two prowess, and all of their knights get plus 15%. So, uh, you know, if, for example, our house had includes a lot of warriors and knights, which it does, because most of our house is in my court, and some of them are knights. Yeah, <laughs> Hippocrates, there you go. Um, no, I don't want to... I mean, yes I do, but go the fuck away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because that's what the wisdom of the day said, right? So, uh... Something about the flavor in Crusader Kings is that, like... Uh... Some things that the character narrates as being, like, obviously magical... Is... Obviously just their perception of it, right? So, or we can go down, so for example, this one gives us more popular opinion and reduces the cost of Hunt and Feast. Hunt and Feast are both quite powerful decisions that you can take. Uh, feast will generally improve opinion that your vassals have of you, whereas Hunt is a good option to get uh, more prestige. So, these ones, like, uh, these ones and erudition are basically attached to their stats, right? So Guile is all about, you know, spying on people. As you go on, you can get all kinds of things. And erudition gets you, you know, better guests, lets you get them more easily, gets you better piety and clerical knowledge, blah, blah, blah. Some of these, I, if I remember rightly, some of these can be different depending on your culture. But, um, either way, for now, because we're going to be declaring a lot of war, and... You know, our, our stated goal for this playthrough, right, is to conquer Ireland and have the Emerald Isle achievement. So, that's what we're going to try and do. So, if we were thinking super long term, I might pick something different. But since that's the goal for this playthrough, I'm going to pick House of Warriors and that will make our knights, which are already very powerful, even more powerful. So, our next one will cost 750 Renown, right? And you get Renown based on these things, but Renown also qualifies you towards your level of Splendor, along with Prestige. So, basically the numbers will go up. Okay, so here's our first uh, child interaction. So these have a default setting, or you can try and give them something else and that will give you stress, but it could potentially result in a better trait, but like Brave is already a good trait, so... <laughs> it's, a, it's not as good as it was in Crusader Kings 2, where it's just really, really good in general, uh, since in this game it doubles your likelihood of dying in battle. Which, I mean, who says games aren't realistic, right? Um, but I'm fine with her having that. And especially for a uh, female character who normally won't be fighting in this day and age. Um, until I can eventually, like, reform the faith to allow for equal 
right? Um, so like, you know, this stuff, the extra martial, etc, these all make her more um, appealing as a marriage option, and the drawback almost certainly won't ever come up for her, so keeping grave is fine. Yes! <laughs> oh, we didn't die. Okay. Because, like, we weren't cured of typhus before, right? We, that, we just had a huge uh, boost that was basically negating all of the penalties. And that would wear off eventually. So, getting rid of the illness trait is a huge deal. And I'm very glad. <laughs> So we are inevitably having one of those dull periods where not much happens and you're just sitting and waiting. Uh, this is why in the first part I was like, you know, have something else to do. Since the game will usually pause if something important happens, so you know, find something else to watch or read a book or something. It's like, inevitably you will have these periods where you just have nothing to do. Yeah, pretty much. I would do that, but my phone's almost out of battery. In the meantime, you can also, for example, uh, what I like to do is zoom out the map and see what's going on, <laughs> because you never know what's going to happen. Oh, hello. So, uh, Gwynedd reconquered the Duchy of Powers because they split on, um, succession, right? However, I do kind of want that back, or, because, you know, he's right there, so it's only one Caesar in a way, so it's very cheap for him to just sail over. Uh, and Palace isn't exactly a shitty power, right? Oh, and our Faith leveled up. So at Faithful, we get so all of the insular priests that know us, which is all of them, have a uh, plus five opinion of us. And since how much priests like you directly translates into how much they pay you in taxes and levies, that's pretty important. Very shortly we will have enough money for me to buy the two bowmen retinues that I want, and then we can finally go to War for Dublin. And I do want to get Dublin as quickly as possible, right? Because Dublin has 11 development, we only have 6 over here. Dublin is the digio capital of the Kingdom of Ireland. Um, does it tell you where the... Yeah, okay. So, the digio capitals, digio, digio, whatever capitals, usually have, in addition to having like slots for duchy buildings like this one does, not that we can build stuff because we don't have the- oh, no we do actually have stuff for it. I forgot that we started at 1066 for a second there. Um, the uh, the um, yeah it's Latin. The uh, development here being so much better and the fact that it's the initial capital just cut- the bubonic plague? Um... <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> Fortunately, uh, disease transmission isn't muddled in this game like it is if you have the Reaper's Dew in Crusader Kings 2, so that's not nearly as bad as it could be, but, like, you don't want to see people with the bubonic plague. <laughs> 
you know, I think, what did they say it killed something? Was it one third of the European population or one third of the human population? Because like either way it was a shitload of people. <laughs> Oh yeah, you can come back now, because um, I accidentally still have him on support schemes, but I don't need to do that anymore. Now, what's the line of succession here? Okay, I'm not even in it, so I would need to get a claim on this and then revoke it if I wanted it back. But once I take Ormond, I will be at my holding limit, and I just need this guy to die. Please, I'm begging you. Oh good, he has Malmarish now too. Okay, so it's happening. It's a shame, honestly, because he'd make a really good spy master. I wonder if I can negotiate his realist. No, okay. Uh, what if I banish him? What will happen then? Spanish language rules are deposed. Do I still have tyranny up here? I don't. Dude, I should have just banished him in the first place. Well, damn it. Okay. Yeah, okay. It killed a lot of people. Um, I haven't actually done this before, so... Uh, normally, I would play an Iron Man, but for the sake of the uh, thingy... I'm going to save the game first and then see what happens, because I haven't done this in this game yet. So let's see what he says. Okay, cool, so I did inherit it. Nice. Okay, and Ormond has max control too. Okay. But it is the wrong faith, which is not great. Um... So let's send you to start. I'll actually get him to start converting. Which will take a bit, but it's worth it. King's Guard, so we can have more knights. That does mean that I no longer have enough knights, because like most of the people that I have are kind of crap. So what I'm actually going to do is say infinite knights. This costs 150 prestige, which I am saving up because I want more prestige, but this is worth it. And it will spawn guys that we can you know, recruit as knights. And since we have all of this money, thanks to banishing him, I will then use the- Oh! We inherited his light footman right news. Okay, that's cool, but I don't want any of these. Be gone. You too. Okay. And so now I will create two bowman retinues that I wanted. And then I'm going to wait a bit longer for them to top out again. Like, you know, we now own all of this land, right? It's a lot of land, and Port Ledge is kind of okay. Like, it's got well-developed stuff going on over here, we've got pastures, we've got build homes, we'll get some good tax out of it. Yeah, see, this guy showed up for him. Prowess, great. Become my knight. Okay, what's she got at? Ah, uh, learning from all of it. Okay. Um. Well, why don't I make. And, I, and let's see. Ah, uh, no, I don't want her to be Anglo Saxon. I want her to be Irish. Diligent is such a good trait, and this is for the Sinaia, right? 
So we definitely wanted to have that. It's well worth the stress hit. So that means all of that. Oh, that's right! I forgot that these are not, like, this isn't a duchy, and this isn't a duchy, this is a duchy, and this is a duchy, which I totally forgot about. Wait, did you guys screw up again? What happened? Oh, England beat the shit out of you. Okay, I don't want to make an alliance with you anymore. <laughs> uh, what about you guys? How are you guys doing? I don't have an option over there yet, but like, do you have... Mm -hmm. Sure, you've got a good kid. Let's arrange my marriage with you and my daughter again. Not... Whoa, you don't like me? Oh, because I have too many existing alliances, right. Yeah, the AI doesn't want you to get, like, too many alliances, because then it starts being, um, like, you start turning into huge power blocks. So once you go over, like, two, the AI is like, mm, don't think so. I wonder if I can be mad if I just break this alliance. Oh, I can't actually do that, okay. Um... Uh... He'd like to accept for that, though. I wonder if I can just sway him and improve that. Ah, uh, we will find out, since I currently have a sway scheme going. So, in a few months, and I'm going to wait until it's after winter, and we're just going to fall on Dublin and murder them. Winter puts like a huge cut in supply limit and 3,000 is already a lot. Uh, I don't care too much, so you can keep them patient. Like, um, yeah, okay, so our supply limit in our capital is 3,770. But in, like, over in Dublin, oh, it's more in Dublin, of course. Okay, I can probably not even worry about that, just go over in winter. That's my bone in the top down. There we go, alright, let's go to war with this guy. And you don't have... Oh no, you have that bag again. The total guy is way weaker than we are. I will command them myself because I have incredibly huge commander advantage. Well, actually, hold on. Yo, this guy's amazing, man. Ah, uh, but he's only a knight. Yeah, I'll just come out myself. So, uh... As you might expect, the objective here is to basically go over and flop on Dublin. And what they can do about it is not, not much, and like it, pretty much. <laughs> Is he going to get out of time, or am I going to catch him? I got him! Yeah, so you can see here, right, so our life, so their life horsemen are uncontested, right, and so they're countering our bowmen. Because they're countering our bowmen, like, we are countering their bowmen as well, but we're on the losing side of this counter because they're countering two of our guys instead of only one. Um, so... The, the heavy infantry are only dealing 10% damage, they're getting kind of hosed. But that's okay because we just have so many dudes. Oh wow, that was good. Okay. How much of that loss was from prisoners? Ah, because I have his heir, okay, but is it dumb enough to let me... Who's your heir? Dumb enough, and your ransom who? Okay, we definitely don't want to ransom him, because we can more score for him, but this one we can.
and then we're just going to walk straight into Dublin and fall on it, basically. Nice. Oh yeah, uh, take a look at our economy, by the way. We have minus 4.4 gold, and that's pretty much entirely because of the raised armies. Okay, that's costing us 11 gold per month. This is the cost involved with running men at arms. And this is why in the Middle Ages there weren't many nations that actually had standing professional armies, because most nations just couldn't afford it. Uh, unsurprisingly, one of the few nations that did have a professional standing army, which predates this game, was, you know, the Roman Empire, which conquered pretty much all of the known world to them, <laughs> because they actually had a professional army unlike everyone else. Okay. Oh, but he's not actually worth any boss call. Okay, cool. I can just ransom him straight up then. Ah, uh, this one. How is the besieging army smaller than the garrison? That was weird. Okay. Oh, my other son. Right. Um. Yeah, I really need someone who's a decent person, so we're gonna do that. Oh, another ransom, I think. Yes. So getting prisoners and ransoming them is one of the ways that you can try and keep your economy going in war, because you know, supplying an army is really expensive. contract with friend. Okay, you are already paying... Okay, I wouldn't really get much out of that. I definitely don't want him to have a hook on me, but he's already paying low taxes, so if he's exempt, it basically doesn't matter. And he'll end up with more opinion of me, which is something I want since uh, he's a powerful vassal, but he's not on the council. So that actually helped me, despite it being a negative event. Oh, excellent. Gonna make that man a knight. Holy crap. Okay. Oh, gosh. There we go. So as you can see, they're not really doing anything to us right there. Hey, yo! Uh... Oh, I can well, okay, we beat them up enough that we actually get to enforce demands. Because, okay, the maximum you can have for winning battles is 50%, but we also have the 50% from capturing their air during a battle. So, we just straight up get this stuff. We didn't have to see, finish staging them or anything. So we now are also, we now have a... Oh wait, do we not have a truce with them? We should have a truce with them for the foreseeable future. Shouldn't? Yeah, I was gonna say, right, okay. Maybe it's on me instead. Yeah, so we now have a truce with them for five years. So that's basically to stop you from just like bogging really, really quickly. So, first things first, uh, we can disband our armies, we don't need them. And now we have a slight problem because we are over our uh, domain limit, right? 
So we have about a year to get rid of a holding and then it starts causing problems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... This is just how I do it, you could do it with anyone. I'm going to pick someone on my council that I like, like you for example. Um, or even better, actually, I can pick someone from my own house. Because you don't have any claims, but you're pretty decent. So what I can do is I can grant him a title, right? So I can say, I'm no longer in this land, so I'm going to give it to you, but in exchange, you will become my vassal. So I'm going to give him Ossery, and the reason for that is because Ormond, Thomond, and Ennis, and Desmond are all part of my primary duchy title. Whereas Ossery is part of the duchy of Leinster, right? It's these two lands. So later on, when I get around to making that, I might, you know, make him the Duke of Leinster. So for now I'm going to give him Ossery. That will get me out of my... That will get me back to my domain limit, and it will still let me keep Dublin, which I'm actually going to make my capital shortly. So I can do that. And also, since he's a member of my house, uh, it's actually a good thing. Why do we have a disabled building? Ah, because I conquered it. Okay. That's alright. Now, what I do need to do is promote the culture, so I want to change this from Norwegian to Irish, right? That will take a significant amount of time, but it will be very much worth it. And uh, later on, so now I can create Neath, and I should move my capital here. And I should set it as a new rally point. So you can do that by clicking the little plus down here, and then you click where you want it to show up. So now we have another rally point over there. So Dublin is traditionally the capital of Ireland. So later on, when we make the Duchy of Meath, and then make the Kingdom of Ireland, we'll already be set up with our capital in the right spot. It's really important that you don't go over your domain limit. This isn't like Crusader Kings 2, where it's like, oh, I can just go over my domain limit and it'll be fine. Uh, buildings start to not work if you are over your domain limit for more than a year, and that's tremendously problematic. When I get my next, uh, martial... My next, uh, lifestyle perk, I can actually get a um, perk that makes it more likely that people will agree to marriages, and that will be enough to tip out over the edge. If I could get an alliance going with this guy, that would be real good. Like, them or Scotland would be really good. But, like, you don't necessarily want to get too involved with Scotland, because they are inevitably going to end up at war with England. Oh yeah, <laughs> Casey, you're British, you'll appreciate this. So normally at the start of this game it's 1066, right? So the Battle of Stamford Bridge, where William the Conqueror basically swept in, poisoned Harold Godwinson, uh, routed the armies of England at the Battle of Stamford Bridge, and then kicked the uh, Vikings out. Somehow, while I wasn't looking, Harold Godwinson not only survived, but he won the war, despite the fact that William the Conqueror gets a huge stack of event troops to make it nearly impossible for him to lose. So, uh, Harold Godwinson is still King of England, and, uh, young William is somewhere around here. Are you... yeah. Uh, he died... oh, okay, he was assassinated. Um, died under mysterious circumstances, he was assassinated, uh, but he was just, he ended up being Duke of Normandy and, like, losing his claim on England, and Harold Hardwell, who is up here, uh, has also died of old age, which is not surprising, after losing his claim on England. So, like, things went off the rails as soon as I unpaused, but I didn't notice it until a little bit ago when I had nothing to do, so I just panned over to see what was going on and was like, wait a minute, that's the wrong person in charge of England. Okay, so, remember this guy that we allied with ages ago who's all the way over here? They're saying, we need to come to war. Um, 
Here's the thing, how much fame do we have? Okay, so we can actually afford to lose 350 fame without our uh, level degrading. And um, I really don't want to get involved in an overseas war in the middle of France, so I'm just going to say no. I accidentally said yes because I thought I was accepting the decline. Okay, well, we're in it now. Whether I like it or not. So, uh, we're going to get the boys up. Okay. Uh, if you... My advice to you, sincerely, when you're playing Crusader Kings, if you make a mistake, just roll with it. Like, you will probably have more fun doing that than going on that, like, going nuts about it, okay? Um, so, like, this is an expensive proposition, but, you know, we'll get, one thing that you do get, you get a lot more prestige and fame for fighting as an ally than for being the main belligerent in a war, because it's like, oh yes, you know, I'm a good and honourable person, I, you know, helped my allies even though there's nothing in it for me. Uh, so there are advantages to this, just money isn't one of them. Yeah, well, same with CK3. Um, Part of that is because EU4 lets you grab for more than you went to war for, whereas in this you can only get the target of the Cassus Belly. However, this county is the target of the CV and it's the only um, like, it's the main belligerent, or the main target. So if I siege this down, then we win on the spot. And it's not going to take long to siege this down. On top of that, unlike in Crusader Kings 2, you don't have to, like, raise ships and then anchor them and take the huge ship maintenance penalties. You just pay, like, a one-off fee for embarking troops, and you don't then have to transport them back home or lose tons of them. Uh, you can just disband them in hostile territory, or not hostile territory, but you can disband them overseas instead of having to run them back, which is so much nicer. Especially if you're a good Irish boy and like to participate in the Crusades, because, uh, the Holy Land is over here, right? Okay, so here, let me just pull up that, uh, where's Jerusalem? Yeah, okay, so here's Jerusalem, right? So this is help, uh, Kingdom of Jerusalem, the Holy Land, right? That's where this is, and then, uh, so you can see it here. To get there from Ireland, we have to sail all the way around Spain, come through this strait, come all the way over here, back to here. Now, if you were playing Crusader Kings 2, you would then have to leave your boat sitting here for the duration of the Crusade, and it would be, like, hideous amounts of maintenance. And then if you didn't want to take huge amounts of casualties and have the expense of resupplying your men-at-arms, you would then have to sail them all the way back. So not having to do that anymore is just so nice. <laughs> I'm not caught ship, it's under... Ah, that one, Promising Prospect, which I need to take anyway, so that's fine. I should pick up organized march as well because I'm mostly doing heavy infantry stuff and this buffs that significantly. Plus we want archers too. But I'll probably finish out the chivalry tree before I do that. Uh, that's right, we were at war. And we are going to win the war. Please declare. Oh, please don't be gay. Crap. That's not the worst thing in the world, but it does reduce their likelihood of passing without issue, and that's really bad. Because, <laughs> okay. 
like you die without you know a, a solid heir that's a succession crisis so you know, it doesn't matter what your orientation is you know lie back and think of england or ireland in this case <laughs> it's for the good of the realm all right so generous or patient um the diplomacy boost is good and it is a virtue trait i'm also quite fond of patient because of the general opinion but i might just leave the generous let him go ahead so i can just flick this band no worries do i still have those prisoners oh i got to keep them okay cool wait oh i think whoops why are you in Imprisoned. Um, can I just? Oh no no no! Not that. This one. Can I just execute? Oh, not without spending a lot of. Okay, so I am going to spend piety for this, but the prestige bump is worth it. Since remember, I want that hundred and fifty. I want that fifteen hundred prestige so that I can institute chemistry. Since this guy is my rival, I will also lose a lot of stress. So, be gone. How about you? What are you good for? Not much, but I don't really gain anything for keeping it. I wonder if I can just take you. Yeah. Depending on if... Oh, no. Wait, why is your prowess so bad? Okay. Um, I'll just let him go and say, you better convert. Wait, oh, hold on. Who are you? No, I do not want this thing. I... Can I ransom you? No, it will be for a favor. Okay, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I mean, it, that was a dude, but yes. Uh, when uh, people that you have an antagonistic relationship with die, you may lose stress because, you know, they're no longer in your life, so you can breathe a sigh of relief. <laughs> However, since I get nothing out of you, I don't know if I'm going to knock you off. Yeah, I don't even lose anything for it, and you're a local one, so your family members are irrelevant. But Dread is really useful. Because if you have high Dread, then you just scare the crap out of people and win. Okay, yeah, that's true. So, be gone. Right, you. You are also garbage. Can I ransom you? Oh, okay. Why do you have so much money? Never mind. There you go. Right, you. Oh, you're actually pretty good. You're a better steward, at least. Why don't I take you? Wait, so not that. Uh, negotiate release. Recruit to make conversion. Yep. You are not worth anything, but you would make a pretty decent life, so I might actually... Wait, can I not? Oh! Okay, I apparently cannot uh, take you for that, but what I can do is I can take you for a favour and then I can just wipe you later so that I can have three lives. demanded conversion oh well it's not a big deal can i now did you stick around ah even better thanks to getting a new vassal i now have a much better steward and as you can see like he's good enough that there is now way less issue here uh, how is my military going on all right so now is about the time when i start being like okay so I can't make more men at arms retinues, but what I can do is make them bigger. So see here where it says size 1 of 8? So when you increase size, you add 100 dudes. So I'm going to add more footmen and more bowmen to one of my retinues. And then when we get more money later, we will do that backwards.
Okay, so normally I shouldn't have done that war, but uh, it turned out okay. And getting that 100 gold of boost so that we can start building up our military is a really nice added bonus there. Now, do I need to be raising control? Nope. <laughs> okay, there are no valid targets. Cool. Gugaris is such a good trait, like there is no downside to it. What in the societies and Crusader Kings 2, the uh, like Christian monk societies, have an event where it's like, you may get Riaris, or you may turn gay, which is a big problem, but uh, Gregarius is so good that it's worth it every time. Oh, my other son is it? Uh, let's make you also the... Uh... Oh, hey, thank you for following Star Kalulu. Wait, Kalulu, is that you? Okay, I didn't know that you were paying attention to people who were streaming, but that's really cool, thank you. Thank you, that really does mean a lot to me. Unfortunately, we're in a bit of a lull, so you showed up at like the worst possible moment for things actually getting done. Okay, let's see if he'll accept that marriage offer now. your kid. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Okay, so now we have an alliance with this guy. Who the hell are you at war with? Damn, okay. I'm not going to get involved in that unless you want to spend the prestige to call me to war. But he's got nearly a thousand dudes, and his guys don't suck. And he has Huskulls, which are really good. And, you know, he... Oh, he really did call me. Okay, cool. Let's go. I did kind of think that he was going to do that, but that's fine. So we're going to go bang, raise all heal. Um, it's all planes over there, so I don't really need you, so I will leave them. And we are just going to walk right over and beat these guys up. There is a vault. I don't... Yeah, there's no way that we'll get there in time to stop the siege. But, um... Depending on what he decides to do. Okay, he's just out, so we can just go there and counter sage it. Oh, good. Let's keep that one quiet. Don't need it getting out, that my life is a filthy heretic. Oh yeah, I saw that. It was on Have You Been Paying Attention on Monday. Like, they straight up spent the COVID release money on a giant squid statue. It's insane. <laughs> Only in Japan. What the? Okay. Uh, for whatever reason, that, uh, using the, um, open and closed brackets, uh, the lesser than and greater than signs actually broke the chat button. So you doing that is just causing it to show up as asterisks in the, uh, video. Really? Uh, 
I don't really want to do that because I'll have to repay it and it'll be more than 75 gold. And this is not going to last that long, I don't think. Because look, they only have this much land. And they're about to lose everything that they do currently have. I can actually stop doing this. And I'll try and sway my life again. I'll go for a lover, not a uh, romance. Yeah, because that's way more likely to work. So once I've got this, what I'm going to do is something a bit unusual. I'm going to park my guys here and then I'm going to say we'll leave enough people here to keep feeding it down. And then we will go over here and kick the crap out of these guys with everyone else. So see uh, this button here, Station Besiegers? So this will split the army up, so... We left all of the men-at-arms behind, which is actually not what I want. <laughs> okay, uh, I might just regroup them and split them manually. Oh, okay, you can now just reorganize them. That's really good. Okay, so I actually do want all of my retinues because they are worth much more in a fight. And let's bring some of the knights to... Oh, but then we'll leave some of the levies back over here, right? In fact, yeah, we actually outnumber them, but our quality is higher, so we will kind of beat the crap out of them if we do it this way. So these ones are going to go over here. And then this group over here, do I have a siege guy? I do. So this guy has military engineer, so he gives a 30% bonus to your, uh, like to the siege time, so, yes, please have Gregarious, it's so good. So if I look at the siege, the progress is 1.4 per day, but, and then, where is it, the progress, what we get is, yeah, being given a bonus from that commander. Meanwhile, the, like, the actually competent parts of the army are just going to wander off here and beat up these guys a lot. Where do you guys think you're- oh, you're actually just out. <laughs> okay, they just quit entirely, like, nope. Like, they saw me coming and realized they couldn't possibly win that fight, so they just jumped straight out, and where are you guys off to now? They're gonna come back through here, no doubt. In the meantime, I'll just send my guys back over here and regroup. Ah, yeah, there he is. Okay. Whoa! When did you get that many dudes? Actually, I can possibly still win this. Since he just got off the boat and you take a huge penalty for that. Yeah, look at her advantage. 28 in our favour. So despite coming in with way less guys, we kind of kicked the crap out of them. Okay, look at this. We had 982 guys when we showed up. They had nearly twice as many. But we killed 543 of them and they only got 142 of us. Okay, we screwed them up. these guys just to, while we finish off that siege. Hmm, 
does she have? Wrathful, brave, and lustful. Hmm. Let's try that. Alright, let's see if we get that perk. Oops. Well, that didn't go so well. Oh well, these things happen. Uh, yeah, let's see if we get the unlock. We did! Nice, okay. And he's just running for it again, so we're just gonna move straight through and take out the uh oh and we're in debt for a moment, but that's okay, these things happen. Almost as soon as I'm like okay, we're done with the war, I will be out of debt. True. Okay, what are you? No no one, okay. You would make a pretty good spy master though, maybe I will try him. Prove my your opinion of me later. So once again, this is just us sitting and waiting for the siege to complete, and when it does, we'll have won the war. Nice. Oh, she turned out really well. Wait, we- <sighs> Okay, that kind of screwed up the marriage tie, I think, but that's alright. It doesn't immediately take me out of the war though, so I'm still going to get the benefits of participating at the end. Or are we still... Ah, yes, the alliance is still on. Okay, cool. Now that they've actually married. So it will stay like that for a while. But the uh, advantage to this is that when this war ends, because we by far contributed the most, um, we will get a lot of prestige and fame and stuff, and I really need that 1500 prestige. Sure, let's see what happens. Oh, Brave is such a good trade. I have so- wait, do I have Brave already? No, I have so good to get that. Come on. Yes! Okay. There was a chance that that would go badly, but 77% chance of getting Brave is so worth it. Okay, so that thing is now gone, and let's see, she... Hmm... Religion is a pretty high stat for her. Um, but let's do something. Let's see, she has lustful, rough, let's do entertaining. Hey! Oh wow, we got the life too. Please declare. Like, just declare already. I cannot keep my guys raised this much. Thank you. Why did I only get 10 prestige from that? Are you serious right now? I did 100% of the work. Ah. Did you finish? No? Okay. Um, do I still have a truce with you?
not for very much longer. Okay, so you should go and get a clean nasty gun. That'll take just over a year. So our wife is now our lover. So lover gives you more chance to get uh, children, which is good. But, and I should have actually done it for, um, where's the one that has intelligent? This one. I should kind of use her as well. So I can get a better chance of getting quick into the uh, bloodline. There are significant benefits to having your household in order. Okay, so what I need to do next is after I conquer Lancaster. I need to make the Duchy of Neath, and then I need to make the Kingdom of Ireland title. And for that I need money, but now that everything is back where it should be, my money is going up pretty quickly. 5.4 isn't like the biggest income ever, but it's pretty good for a small duke in Ireland, which isn't very developed. I tend to educate children for stats, but you can also do things like um, send them to someone who you don't want to piss off, and uh, because doing that generates a short truce with them, and it raises opinion in both directions. did a really good job with this one. He managed to get a tier 4 trait, so he's going to be really good at getting things going. I am going to forbid him from being a knight though, because I do not want him to die in battle. But man, this guy is amazing! I mean, his base stats are not spectacular, but... I kind of don't care. Oh, you finished growing culture. Good work. I wonder if I can grant him a title immediately. See, uh, characters that don't have um, uh. okay, so one of the ways that the game like, kind of keeps things cool, right, is, uh, See all of these unlanded characters, they almost don't exist, right? Whereas uh, down here, now that he's a count, the AI takes over so he develops you know, a lifestyle and can start making decisions that will raise his stats or cause screw ups. But I like doing this since it means that they can start uh, you know, basically leveling up while we're still playing the parent. 
So we're left 42, okay? If nothing goes wrong, we have a fairly long time ahead of us with this character. So we really want this guy to start working on himself while we can't. I am just going to quickly negotiate an alliance with... Oh, yeah. Um... I am, in fact, going to find him an extra spouse out of someone who has inheritable traits, because hopefully... Oh, no, valid characters found... Okay. Um, I might just say allow marriage then, because this way he can start marrying people so he's not only taking the penalty. Well, this is meant to be like a From Zero tutorial series, so I'm trying to explain absolutely everything. You don't... Strictly... You don't really need to know a lot of this stuff, but like if you wanted a deeper understanding of the game, that's the point where you start looking up video guides. So. Ah, excellent unit drive. So there's the claim that we wanted. And now I'm gonna set you to try and convert Dublin. Notice that Ormond has actually converted already. Really? How did that get a con accounting? Oh, I see, it's got bad stuff going on. Oh yeah, and I can swap him for my son even, who in fact is a powerful vassal in my realm, but is also a better marshal. Really? Okay, I can afford that stress hit. Really? Okay, I can use that. So we found out that one of our guys is a heretic. Um, so if he decides to screw with me, then I can basically use that against him. It's only a weak hook, but it's worth keeping in mind that it's there. But I, I'm not inclined to blackmail them about it until I actually need to, right? Because blackmail, blackmailing people makes them pretty unhappy. Uh, so when did we learn this? I don't recall learning this. Okay, of course he's my son. Cool, okay. Lava sorted out. Oh, right, um... I kind of forgot that we had you, but I'm gonna wait until I can get the full amount out of her. <laughs> I forgot that we captured her during that last war. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, the, um... Like, this game is, has a much lower learning curve than Crusader Kings 2, but I noticed when I was browsing the Reddit, I, um, some people were asking things and I ended up answering them, and it was kind of like, I've seen some of these get asked repeatedly, so, so maybe I'll make a guide about it, so I am. <laughs> kind of. Again? Dude, I- oh, it's 750 fame, I- can I afford that hit? I can afford that hit, so I am going to decline. It sets us back a fair bit, but it doesn't actually cost us prestige, it only costs us fame. And we only need 50 more prestige. Respective figure head one because we're going to go to war shortly. One thing that is much better about this game is that if you see a modifier or something in a decision, you can mouse over it and it will tell you exactly what it does, which Crusader Kings 2 didn't always do. Really? Okay. So a cadet branch is like an offshoot of a dynastic house. It's 
like a mini house under the same umbrella of the dynasty and it means that the person who is next down is the house head so if we look at our dynasty here so we have the Dal Gais dynasty Irish am I right and then if we check there are actually three houses under this so there's our house which is actually a cadet branch of this house but there are no more living members of that right and then that guy who I gave Osiris to has just made his own cadet branch which has four members that he has control of but they're still all part of the same dynasty so they all benefit from dynastic interactions and so on and I'm still the dynastic head so I qualify for dynast dynasty head interactions which can be used for anyone in the dynasty regardless of what house they're in so it, it, it's kind of like how the um, system of vassalage works like if I go over to Dublin you can see here so we have this county which is the Eldon of Dublin and then it's ah dude for real okay um I'll just let him have a hook that's fine so then it is then a duchy and then a kingdom and then an empire so it's kind of like in this case the empire is like uh, the dynasty itself is like the empire, and then the houses are kingdoms, I guess, is one way of putting it. Okay, so what did he do? Oh, protecting title revocation. That's actually fine, because I wasn't planning on revoking that title in the first place. Yeah, that, that's kind of the big new thing about Crusader Kings 3, is that there's a lot more focus on the dynasty and its houses. Because in theory that was the point in Crusader Kings 2, but it, because there wasn't much going on with that, uh, like it didn't really matter very much. So they definitely did a good job of introducing that in a way that worked in this game. I just need a little more prestige. Can I make this yet? No, I need 250 gold. Jesus. Maybe I should just go into stewardship once I filled out this tray. But I do want to get. I'll. No, I'll leave the. I'll leave the. Uh... extra military stuff for the next character. I'll just finish the train and then I'll probably go into stewardship and try and focus on money because you need a lot of it to start making titles because I need what is it? Uh, 250 to make Meath and then 500 to make Ireland. So I need 750 gold and at the moment I get 5 gold a month. Hmm. It's particularly rough as well because like due to being insular I can do take vow of poverty which is pretty powerful. Like look at that piety buff, right? Plus two per month. I would basically double how much piety I'm getting. Because see how here I'm getting plus two point seven a month. But minus twenty percent income is something I really can't have at the moment. And, oh wow, England actually swallowed, um, shit, what's this down here? No, this bit. Not all of Wales, but this used to be independent, and now it isn't. Oh. Oh. Excuse me. I, um, the new software that I'm using doesn't have, like, a global mute button which I would normally hit before I sneezed, but I can't do that now, so... Yes, 1500 prestige, okay. So we've been waiting for this, so we go to... Oh, that's rough. I actually... 
we can invoke Tanistry, and I believe that the Kingdom of Island will actually inherit uh, the lore, but I need to double check if that actually... Oh, thanks. I did actually make it myself, but like out of stock parts, so it's not anything like amazing or whatever. Let's uh, just have a look down here. Uh, titles, there we are. When I said play, like in, in the first thing, I was like, uh, make sure that you play with the wiki handy. And the reason for that is because it uh, is really, really useful. Let's look under succession. Of succession and of succession. Yeah, um, like CK3 is a lot better about not making you go to outside stuff necessarily, but I really recommend doing it. Okay, so because of how this works, um, I need to wait until I get the kingdom title. That was too many. I need to wait until I get the kingdom title before I institute the Tanistry Law. So that means that getting the 750 gold that I need is much more important. Yeah, you have a good day. And thanks for dropping in. I really wasn't expecting you to show up of all people. in this guy. Okay, let's try to do that. Oh! He beat me! Or, I can try again. Um, it's only wounded and I have a good enough physician. I can afford to attempt this. Oh, actually no. Because I was planning on getting a new trait anyway, so I don't need the bonus lifestyle experience. I just got the last perk that I need to unlock Gallant. I can click that, and I can go here, we want the extra monthly income, so we're going to select the wealth focus. Now this will take a while to level up, right, because I'm only getting how much experience per month? 25 per month, so it's going to take about three years, not counting events. But it's worth it to start getting things like, uh, you know, Taxman or Avaricious. Okay, basically, I need the money! God damn it. So, <laughs> I can just say... I yield, you know, you win, good job. And there's no drawback. Oh, right. I have the money now. I should be declaring war on Lanster. Negotiating an alliance with your vassals basically helps prevent both of you from doing dumb things to each other. Uh, so it's useful in this case, so I don't want him to be like, I should be the king already. Like, I just can't wait to be king, right? So... <laughs> this is part of the way of keeping him from, like, knocking me off before I'm actually ready for him to inherit.
Dude, they came in with 854 men and there were four survivors. Wow. <laughs> We beat that guy up. I don't even know where his army went. We might have stack wiped him. Like if you if you win a battle far enough, then it just kills pretty much everyone. I think that's actually what happened. Did you just build it in Holland? You did, wow. Okay. You are really doing stuff. How did you get that much gold? Oh, I guess it doesn't matter that much. Oh, we beat them again. <laughs> and once again, they got destroyed. <laughs> three survivors. I wonder if this is three of the four guys. I mean, the game doesn't keep track, but it'd be kind of funny if that was the case. Dude, why are my kids turning out so well? It's actually kind of nutty. Um... Let's see if we can't marry in some prestige, and if we can marry in matrilineal. I don't really want the extra alliance heal, but like... The prestige gain, matrilineal, okay. Uh, well, you're actually pretty good, okay. The prestige gain hurts, but being able to breed in good traits is very powerful. is mine. Yeah, titles can be created, but I need to actually you know, get around to that. So now we're back at the domain limit and I'm pretty much just going to wait until we get 750 gold. And then I'm just going to go bang me, bang, Kingdom of Ireland. So this may take a little while, but that's okay, these things happen. Ooh. Whoa, look at that learning. <laughs> Holy crap. That is so worth the upset peasants. Okay, hold on a second, where is my key? Where is my key? I see. Yeah, if I see Franz Fels, if I see. No? Wait, are you. Go back, go back, go back. Ah, uh, my claw, my claw, my claw, my claw. Why are you on. Okay, I don't have any ruins in the key code, right? Um... The only thing I don't really like is that you can't sort your claw by anything, so. No, I just can't offer her this. Okay. Well, I wonder if I can just marry her myself though. Because I think I still have a... yeah. And like, look at this shit. Holy crap. Not only that, but I am going to make her my, um... position. Which will tilt the queen a bit, but... 
25 learning? Are you kidding me? There's a ridiculous amount of learning. And once she's appointed as physician, she'll start gaining the physician trait as she works, so... I'm not really losing anything by doing this. She's, um, not fertile either, so I have to worry less about getting, like, even more suns and screwing things up even more. My income has improved significantly since I took off Garmin, though, it's, 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 not, it's only going to get higher as, like, the control level goes up, so at the moment, you know, I have minus 30% taxes, but it's only going to go up from there. I don't, oh, hey, they didn't even go Norwegian, they're still Irish, nice. Alright, hey, thanks for dropping in, Kalula, and thanks for the follow. It really does mean a lot to me. I usually stream starting from about, what time is it? About two and a half hours ago, or I might start like eight-ish hours before that, depending on what's going on. But I have a YouTube channel that I upload almost everything on, so if you miss stuff, you can always watch it there. Okay. <laughs> that was not really what I was expecting, but that's alright. Where are we going? Uh, mine. And who are we always? You. Okay. So, as before, we're basically just gonna walk right over and fall on them. Yeah, see you. Thank you for dropping in. Is this been two and a half hours? After this war, I might be obliged to call it quits just because it will be. What time is it? It's already 2 a.m. Don't want it to get too much later than that because I accidentally stayed up until like 4 a couple of nights this week and I'm trying not to do that. I think I mentioned this last time, but see how eventually this arrow here turns white? Once that happens, the army's movement is locked, so you can't, like, move them somewhere else. Uh, it used to be in Crusader Kings 2, before it got changed to work like this, that you could really just, like, have armies bail out immediately if something was going wrong, and it made warfare, like, really lame. Um, it's much more interesting and strategic now, I think. So I'm pretty happy that that change is in by default for Crusader Kings 3. Okay, so since we're now in Siege Mode, what I'm going to do is select my army and swap the commander for this guy who is good at sieges. Because that will give us more siege prog progress, and you know, look at this. We're now getting yeah, he's cutting six days off each siege event, which is nutty. They're coming every twelve days instead of any twenty days, because of the small breach as well. 
So we're just smashing this siege. You'll notice as well here, this isn't like a direct timeline. This is how much it could conceivably last for. But because of uh, you cost like at siege events, like um, you know, sickness spreading gives you an extra 10% of the siege progress. Now it's down to eight days, for example. And you know they're running on supplies, so we got a one-time increase and 30% you know, decrease in time between siege events. So it's just dropped from seven months to four months. He's got 190 guys over here, but, you know, he can't do anything, because if he tries to walk back over to his castle, you know, there are 3,000 guys sitting out here besieging it. We are taking attrition from being over the supply limit, but it doesn't really matter that much. So in this case, he just raised all of his guys that were, that had, like, reinforced here, but weren't raised, to try and escape, but, you know, we have 3,000 guys sitting there, so they kind of just got obliterated. Why can I declare war on the King of England? Really? Oh, because you have... Right. I'm not going to do that, but it's cool that I could. I'm just gonna let that go because it's not worth worrying about. Um, having bastard children can be a big issue, but it's not going to be for us at the moment. Please just declare. Please enforce demands. You are costing me money over here. Thank you. No. Ooh, I don't want to stress. Okay, um. You matter less since you are no longer my physician, so I am going to let you go. Wait, have you guys gone out of mind? Is that why you're wearing random shit? I bet that's the case. Okay, this is worthwhile just for the experience. These guys, I don't really care what I think of me, so it doesn't really matter if I screw up. Oh, but it worked. Cool. And we won. Okay, disband you. Are you still my prisoner? No, we let you go because you're a kid. What is that? Stuttering. Ah, okay, they stutter. Uh, no. I don't think so. I'm basically just sitting here trying to get money because I need 750 gold and then we can become the King of Ireland. That is pretty much the only thing that I am waiting for at this point. Yeah, okay, we're now making nearly 8 gold per month. That is significantly better than it was. Alright, let's see here. I really want that money. I really want that money. Uh... Yeah, no, good stuff. You, for example, as a man, you are a really good choice to blackmail. Because I can now demand payment and oh, it's only that much. And I get stress! I forgot that I'm generous. Crap. Okay, so I should talk a bit about stress. Um, stress mostly increments when uh, you take decisions that are out of character. So it will say, you know, because you're generous, uh, you know, you get stress when you demand money. So that was a mistake. But um, I actually really like the stress mechanic because in Crusader Kings 2 there were lots of choices that you would just never actually select unless you were like really hardcore role-playing because they were like just bad. So stress gives you an incentive to pick choices that are in character even if they may not mechanically be the best possible choice, which I think is really good. 
Why can I demand payment from you? I'm not gonna do that. And I'm not gonna do that because 15 gold is not worth critical stress. So when your stress gauge maxes out, you get a stress level and you get a mental break. And, uh, the main thing that can happen there... Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, so you can develop, uh, traits that have penalties but help you reduce stress. Well, some of them don't, uh, have penalties but they're really rare. Or you can just try and deal with it without picking up a stress management trait. And, uh, things can potentially get out of hand, like you can get into a stress spiral where you have to make bad choices because of your stress and then those snowball and you end up with more stress, but I like that. I, it's not necessarily implemented as well as it possibly could be at the moment, but I like the idea a lot. I think if they can tune it a little, and I'm sure they will over the course of the game, because you know what Paradox is like, um, it will turn out very well. But, I mean, you know, in Crusader Kings 2, when you were raising a kid, for example, you know, your designated heir, they will always go turn out as, like, an ambitious, shrewd, brave, whatever, because it was really easy to organize for those events, and if you've got those choices, it's like, why would you ever not pick them, right? Let's try and convert the Lone Star. And, yeah, let's just leave him on the money train. Yeah, uh, Crusader Kings 2 did that as well, and this game does as well, but, um, it, it was more that some choices that you always got are things that nobody would ever pick unless they were super hardcore role-playing, so I really like that there's now an actual reason to do so. Uh, okay, so now we're going to... I'm not actually going to make my second, uh, Dachi title now, right? Um, because if something goes wrong and I die, then this is going to get split in half because each of my sons will inherit one duchy, and I don't want that to happen. So I'm actually going to wait for the 750 gold, and then I'm going to, uh, and then I'm going to make the Ducal title and the Kingdom title simultaneously. Okay, let's see. Anyone who I can get a good alliance from? Nope. How about the prestige gain? Is that sort of like heritable traits? Uh, let's go start for all on that one. What is that? A giant? Ah, it's cool. Okay, but no. Um, can you? I would prefer not to get an alliance, so we'll do that. Yeah, that's a huge prestige bump. That's a lot worth doing. Unfortunately, this does tend to be, like, Kind of the boring part of the game where you know normally i would watch something else like you know if you're binging a series especially if you aren't watching something that is in a language that you don't speak fluently um like ck is a really good game to play while you're binging stuff because there are these long periods where you just sit here Oh wow, England has completely consolidated itself over Wales. That's impressive. Often England will just splinter, but it's actually doing quite well for itself. Wait, what the hell? How did you how did you inherit England? Who the hell are you? What happened to freaking what? 
Here, hold on, hold on. So it was held by you, right? Okay, but how did you inherit it? You aren't related to him at all. Do you have a special... Oh, it has Saxon elective! Okay, so he got elected in, that's how it happened. Really? Oh, because he's exempt, okay. Um... Nearly 80% is pretty good. Oh well. These things happen. That's the way the game is played. Nice. But yeah, having good spouse is really good because you'll periodically get, especially if they have a high opinion of you, because you'll periodically get events like that where the game's just like, oh, something really good happened because, you know, your wife is competent and was trying hard. So, like, it, it pays to be on good, like, to make efforts to be on good terms with your spouse. Especially because if you check out Team the Castle there, like, she is assisting me at the moment. So these are all the bonuses that I'm getting from her. Or I can ask her to focus on one specific stat, but in this case I just wanted the general advantages. It's like, it can be, especially if your wife has died, right, and you already have a perfectly good heir, it can be worth marrying a character who is over childbearing age if they have high stats, because then you can use that to boost your own stats. His taxes wouldn't really improve by like that, so I'm not going to uh, do that. Oh, excuse me. It's getting late, but I really want to make that kingdom title before I go to bed. Because I want to start, like, the next one talking about, like, uh, because at the moment, right, we've started out small and we've kind of just taken stuff by force one bit at a time. So I'd like to finish doing that and make it a kingdom title and then talk about how you can get people in the other way, and, like, how the game changes once you're at king level. Because I don't want to talk about that in the same video as this, since this is already nearly three hours long. So I just need 350 more gold, which will come in time. Especially since uh, being on this uh, lifestyle has a good chance of like, creating events that may cause me to get gold. Or sometimes things like this will happen, where despite my steward being unspectacular, um, the only possible side effect here is that I may get extra taxes. I think it's equal to... Knowing Paradox, it will be equal to a percentage of my annual income. Oh, I have a new bishop. Okay. Oh, and he's significantly better. Nice. Okay. That's really good. Hmm. Okay, you are learning war for some reason, so I will take you on myself. And you have stewardship as well, so you can go there. If you really want to get the maximum out of family trees, um, you have to do things a lot more complicated than this, and I'm personally no good at it, but I know that there are guides for that kind of thing around. Uh, so I'd recommend looking at one of those instead of this, if that's what you were here for. Um, I am absolute trash at playing the marriage game. I wasn't good at it in Crusader Kings 2. I'm not good at it in this game. Uh, I'm quite a straightforward player in that regard. 
the like you've seen what I was doing where I was like marrying I was tr oh shit I okay um Okay, um, that's pretty much a perfectly good place to end this episode there, because I'm going to have to do a lot of cleanup and discussion about what to do on Succession, and, um, fuck me, that guy created me. Okay, I do have a claim on that though, right? Yeah, okay. <clears throat> that was not good. Like, this, this was what I was worried about happening, but I really didn't expect to just die there. Um, with nothing going on. And, like, no major damages or anything. But, uh, these things do happen. Okay. So, I'm gonna leave it there, and next time we'll talk about how to deal with the succession when everything goes incredibly wrong like this one has. And... So we'll have to, you know, handle the succession, we'll have to sort out what this character is doing with their life. Uh, we'll need to reorganize about our alliance with Connect and this place. <laughs> so, so, I don't know. Um, and then we'll have to get back to the business of conquering Island. So thank you everyone who dropped in. I'm just going to save the game right there. Uh, thanks for everyone who dropped in. It's really good. Um, I hope the new format was good. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, please like the video if you did. And if you want to see more, you can always hit the subscribe button. And I usually upload stuff on YouTube after about a day or so. Sometimes less, sometimes more. Um, so... Hopefully, if you subscribe, you won't get spammed with alerts, because I don't normally upload stuff, like, every day or whatever. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I will see you guys next time.